by many names. In France, they're simply Stan and Ollie. In Germany, they're known as Dick and Dorf. And in Italy, they're called Crick and Croc. But in any language, they're the greatest comedy duo of all time. For more than 60 years, the movie team of Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy have been providing the world with plenty of what it sorely needs. Laughter. Put one hand here, one here, and pull! Hardy worked so well together, it seemed like they had always been a movie twosome. Try and make the people happy, and will you keep quiet a minute? <laughs> and uh, have a good time, and have everyone else have a good time. I'm talking to the gentleman. Will you keep quiet just a moment? And then I think that uh, after a couple of weeks, we might... What is it? You're standing on my foot. Oh, I'm sorry. Both Laurel and Hardy had enjoyed successful solo film careers prior to their first teaming in 1919. Producer Bronco Billy Anderson had starred Stanley, the skinny one, in a two-reel comedy titled Lucky Dog. Playing a small role as a criminal was Oliver, the fat one. It was a fortuitous meeting, but a temporary one. Laurel and Hardy would not share the screen again for nearly a decade. It was while both comedians were working for producer Hal Roach in 1927 that they were eventually teamed as partners. That was the beginning of a film career that would result in more than 100 comedies, mostly for producer Roach. And the phrase Laurel and Hardy became synonymous with slapstick as well as heartfelt camaraderie. Laurel essentially played the helpless loser who was always there when his buddy needed him. Hardy, on the other hand, was the self-proclaimed smart one of the two. Although much of the team's comedy was derived from the fact that Ollie was really dumber than Stan. Even simple tasks like changing clothes could result in near catastrophe. case of Laurel and Hardy, inanimate objects could prove just as dangerous. What are you doing with that cushion? Well, I keep on bumping my head. See? Move it in front of the window where you can stand up.
How anyone could be so stupid as to stand there and continually bump their head is beyond me. Why don't you mind your own business? Beneath all the apparent animosity, there existed friendship. This scene pretty much sums up their entire relationship. Oliver is about to commit suicide. In typical fashion, Stan decides to end it all as well, mainly as a show of solidarity with his partner. <laughs> Well, goodbye, Ollie. Goodbye, Stan. Good luck. Where are you going? Well, I don't want to get my name dragged into this. Yeah. What? <coughs> What's this for? Now, when I count three, we'll both jump in. What have I got to jump in there for? I'm not in love. So that's the kind of a guy you are. After all I've done for you, let me jump in there alone. Do you realize that after I'm gone, that you just go on living by yourself? People would stare at you and wonder what you are, and I wouldn't be here to tell them? There'd be no one to protect you? Do you want that to happen to you? I never thought of that. I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings, Ollie. I didn't mean to be so dispolite. That's all right, Stanley. Let bygones be bygones. This is going to be easier than you think. Now move this over here for me. Don't do that. Are you ready? Goodbye, Ollie. Goodbye, Stanley. One. Two. Holly. What? I just thought of something. Listen, you remember once you were telling me that when we passed away, we'd come back on this earth in some other form, like a bird or a dog or a horse or something? Oh, you mean reincarnation. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Well, now that we're going to go, what would you like to be when you come back? Oh, no, I've never given it much thought. I like horses. I guess I'd like to come back as a horse. Huh. What would you like to be when you come back? Oh, I'd rather come back as myself. I always got along swell with me. I mean, you can't come back as yourself. Now come on and stop wasting my time. Are you ready? Goodbye, Ollie. Goodbye. One. Two. Ollie, just thought of something. Do you think the water's deep enough? Maybe you might bump your head if you just, well, I never thought of that. By the early 1930s, Laurel and Hardy's images seemed to be everywhere. They were the most popular comedy team in the movies. They even turned up in cartoon form in films made by Walt Disney and Warner Brothers. By the time they made their 50th film together, a short subject titled Be Big, Stan and Ollie were being seen throughout the entire world. This film was actually shot four times. Once in English, once in German, once in French, and once in Spanish. Laurel and Hardy simply delivered their lines phonetically. But regardless of the dialogue, it was slapstick that made Laurel and Hardy.
to me and pull the food off. They're killing me. Also graceful song and dance men. Shine on, shine on, harvest moon up in the sky. I ain't had no loving since January, April, June, or July. Snow time. and spoon, shine on, shine on harvest moon for me and my girl. and Hardy were capable of taking any kind of situation and making it play like orchestrated comedy. Shot at sunrise. I hope it's cloudy tomorrow.
that thing down. The natural warmth of their on-screen characterizations was fortified by their lowly status in society. Stan and Ollie were two of life's more pathetic losers. Pathetic because they didn't realize how bad off they were. They always seemed to be getting the short end of the stick, especially when it came to their relations with the opposite sex. What can I do for you? My friend and I would like a bottle of wine. And bring three glasses. Three glasses? We thought maybe you'd like to join us. You know, I feel as fidgety as a jitterbug. You do? Yeah. What's the matter? Well, I'm nervous. You know, Stanley, this will be the first time I've ever been married. <laughs> Say, that's a good time to Go on now. Why don't you? Oh, go on, tell her. What's the matter? Are you scared? I'll tell her for you. Oh, no, not now. I know just how you feel. Let me fix it for you. Oh, I can fix it just as easy. <laughs> Say, he's got something to tell you. Something to tell me? Yeah, he's nuts about you. Nuts? Just plain nuts. Oh, wait. Oui. No, I don't mean that. I mean he's crazy about you. He's going to marry you. Aunt Jolly. Go on, stop pumping. You want to marry me? <laughs> well, that is, if you don't mind. <laughs> You make fun of me. No, he's not kidding. He's on the level. Aren't oh, Charlie? Why, certainly. I was never more sincere in my life. That's very nice of you, I'm sure. But that can never be. Oh, won't you give me one chance, Georgia? Go on, why don't you? Is there someone else? Oh, yes. Very much so. I'm so sorry. That's that. No use crying over split milk. Well, I guess we'd better be going, eh? Come on, we'll... You go ahead. What's the matter? Aren't you going out with me? I want to be alone. Stan and Ollie were always at odds with the gals. If they weren't playing bachelors who couldn't get a date, they were henpecked married men scheming to escape shrewish wives. Knock me right into a heap. Into a heap? Yes. All of a sudden? Yes. I'll get a doctor. Yes. No, no, oh, oh, no, 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 no. Don't bother about a doctor. I'll be all right. I know what it is. It's my nerves. I've been at the snapping point for days. <laughs> well, I suppose we'd better postpone the trip. Yes, I think so, too, by all means. So do I. Oh, no, no. I wouldn't think of spoiling your trip. But, darling, if you're sick... It's nothing. You two girls go right along. Stan can stay here with me. I'll be feeling fine in the morning, and we'll come down on the first trip. Well, that certainly is big of you. If you think it's all right, dear, I certainly would hate to miss this trip. There's the taxi. Taxi is ready. Oh, will you get the bags that are in the other room, please? Yes, ma'am. Mine are in the hall. You wouldn't mind staying and taking care of me, would you, Stanley? Well, if it's all the same to you, I'd rather go. Well, make up your mind. What do you want to do? I just said I wasn't going. <laughs> oh! 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 What's the idea? The gang is giving a stag party in our honor tonight. What, at the club? Yes. For us? Certainly. Well, you can't Sightly. go. Why? You're sick. Oh. You're all in a heap. That was only an excuse to get them out of the house. Oh. Why didn't you tell me? Oh. You certainly fooled me that time. 
I thought you were the same. Oh, it's the wife, the towel for my hands. You tried it. Get me do something to help me. Get you. Open the door, the door, the door, the door. Oh, oh. I forgot my fur. Oh. Thank you. Oh. Reminded me of you, dear. Well, that's sweet. Now take care of yourself. I will, Smith. Oh, good night. Let me know how oh, you oh, are. Oh, oh, Bye. oh, oh, oh. Then, Mom, open your apartment, get your clothes, bring them over here, and dress in my room. Here, this way. Now hurry back. Get out of here. <laughs> Usually, when one of the boys found a lady receptive to his affections, she was already married, and always to an extremely jealous husband. Rosette, may I come in? Rosette? Yes, you all right? Time like this, you had to do that. Quick, help me get her on the bed. Get a seat. Quick, get me a glass of water. the meaning of this. What will we say? You take up your story. I've got mine. <laughs> Just when the boys had perfected their comedy formula, they signed with MGM Studios and 20th Century Fox for a series of features. They thought it was a wise career move. But the films bore little resemblance to their simple yet masterful classics of the 1930s. There's nothing to it. All you have to do is look the lion straight in the eye. Lions are afraid of that. I read that in a book. But did the lion read that book? You're always showing your ignorance. Well, I have as much right to be ignorant as you have. In fact, more. Much more. Stanley, at times you're most trying. Well, you can't blame me for trying.
As the 40s progressed, Laurel and Hardy watched their careers slide through their fingers. The films they appeared in at MGM and Fox were embarrassing in comparison with their earlier Roach classics. One happy result of their association with Fox, however, was their appearance in a U.S. government educational film titled Tree in a Test Tube, shot in the Fox lot. This rare footage is the only professional film ever produced featuring either Stan Laurel or Oliver Hardy in color. What? Got any? No, like most guys, you don't realize how many articles made of wood products you carry around. For instance, that newspaper. Yup, that newspaper is largely made of trees, wood pulp. Of course, most people know that, but many people don't know that a lot of other objects come from a wood base. Uh-oh, what's up? Why, Mr. Laurel. Oh, sure, your wife's, of course. Anyway, they're rayon, another wood product. Well, what else, boys? A cigarette case? A plastic. Also, a cigarette holder. More plastic. Any more wood, my lad? No, but there's wood in his hat. The sweatband. Right, more imitation leather. A new spring hat, eh? Ouch. Pajamas are rayon, and rayon is a wood product, remember? Hey, what you got there, chum? Oh, shorts, eh? More rayon. But damn, such color. <laughs> and now, a shirt. Tie. And socks. All rayon. Say, the suitcase. Yup, even that's made out of laminated wood covered with canvas. And it's a good thing these lads didn't come around here with a trunk. We'd be here for days. Oh, boy. You can go now. Goodbye, Stan. So long, Oliver. And thanks very much, guys. Darn nice of you to help. Hey! Oh, well, they need exercise anyway. By the mid-40s, Laurel and Hardy were considered old-fashioned, and they were finished in movies. So they took to the road on a personal appearance tour that eventually led them to a series of performances in Europe. Overseas, Stan and Ollie were still big stars. While heading for the continent in the early 50s, Oliver Hardy gave a rare newsreel interview. Uh, Oliver, we met Stan just a short time ago, a couple of months ago, as a matter of fact, and we found out that you and he were back together again in some of those wonderful pictures. Well, we've never been a project. No, that's true, but you know a great many of the people out there in the public have uh, thought that you were a project. Well, that's true, because they've gotten us mixed up with other teams, you mm -hmm. see. But uh, Stan and I have been together for 23 years, and... We're still friends. I think that's a record. That is a record. Not only are you friends, but I noticed, for instance, whenever I spoke to Stan personally uh, in the cabin before and after the interview I did with him, whenever he talks or refers to you, he doesn't call you Oliver or babe. Hardy. That's right. He's your babe to him, and, and that, I think, typifies your relationship and friendship. Well, it's a funny way that I got the name of Babe. That was years and years ago, and then I had my first shave. So the barber went in, and he charged a dime, and he put some powder. He says, that's all right, baby. You'll clean. <laughs> so that name is stuck ever since. This uh, picture that you're going to make in Paris is called Atoll K. Atoll K. And it sounds very atomic. Well, uh, we think it is anyway, <laughs> but we're mistaken in the end, of course, as usual. It is about the atom bomb in a sense, then, isn't it? Well, it's uranium. You know. We think we've discovered this island with uranium, and... Uh, the different countries start bidding for our favor to get the island. Eventually, we find out that uh, it isn't uranium. So the country passes up and leaves us sitting on this island. Uh, well, Oliver, before you got into uh, the team of Laurel and Hardy, you were a director out in Hollywood. No, I used to work with a, an old-time comedian and direct and work with him, Larry Seaman, mm -hmm. uh, remember. Back in the era of slapstick. That's right, and then I did some dramatic pictures. And then, by accident, Stan and I were thrown together, and it evolved from that. Do you find just as much interest today in the old-time plastic material? I think that there is more interest, but there's so little of it done. That's true. I think that people want to laugh now, but they, they don't have the things to laugh at. That's <laughs> very, very true. And uh, people nowadays, they want to be connected with the higher type of, uh, uh, we might say, drama. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be associated with the comedy. Yet and they I, like to see it. It's because the comedy is difficult to make, you see. And difficult to do, too. Ah, you said Have it. Have it come off. You had some wonderful ones. I remember one especially, Flying Deuces. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I 
laughed at that and laughed at it and laughed at it. Boy, it, it really takes something to get my arm around you, but I want to say goodbye to the friends, Oliver. Because... You should have tried my waist. You couldn't have gotten around. <laughs> no, no, impossible. <laughs> Impossible was the key phrase for the boys' next film, the previously mentioned Atoll K. Since Laurel and Hardy were still a big attraction in Europe, they were signed to star in the film, which was co-financed by the French government. Released in America under the title Utopia, this poorly produced film would be the very last Laurel and Hardy comedy ever made. Still Laurel, I presume. Oh, no, I'm Oliver Hardy. I'm Mr. Laurel's financial exchequer. But where is Mr. Laurel? Oh, right here, Mr. Laurel is... Ah, Mr. Laurel, we've had quite a time finding you. And now, gentlemen, let me introduce the two attorneys who handled your late uncle's affairs in France and in Italy. Mr. Hardy, Mr. Bonfoy, Mr. Laurel, Signor Poltrone. How do you do? Signor Poltrone, Mr. Hardy, Mr. Bonfoy, Mr. Laurel. My name is Bramwell. Mr. Hardy. Well, gentlemen, could we get down to business? Oh, thank you, Stanley. Now, just how much was this legacy? Oh, you Americans, you never seem to believe in formalities, do you? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's one thing about us. We always believe in business before pleasure. You see. As a matter of fact, we had better get right to business. Your uncle was quite an eccentric. He uh, didn't believe in banks. <laughs> he insisted on keeping his money in cash. And here it is. What is it? It's money, I think. Indeed it is money. Is that all we get? Oh, but you also get an island. An island? And a beautiful yacht. A yacht? Yes, yes. The yacht is tied to a dock right here, see? In Marseille, France. And the island is here, in the South Seas. Gee, that sounds wonderful, Ollie. Well, that sounds swell. But how much of the tax is on that? Oh, none. The island is absolutely tax-free. Here's your money. The papers for the boat. And this is the deed to the island. Well, now, that cleans out, uh, I mean, that cleans up the estate. Gentlemen, I bid you good day. Come, Stanley. The film was a bust. Stan and Ollie's performances in the film were hampered by the fact that both men were gravely ill during shooting. Oliver nearly had a heart attack. Stan, in fact, suffered a stroke that almost killed him. In addition, the boys were forced to respond to supporting players who literally didn't understand English. Their voices were redubbed in English after the film's completion, but it made interaction on screen extremely difficult. Now, when I give the signal, you pull. Hey, cool, what are you doing? I could have broken my arm. Who are you and what are you doing on this boat? You've got no right here. I have my rights. I am traveling as a stowaway. They didn't tell us a stowaway came with a boat. No. Listen, fellas, I could easily have been a stowaway on any other boat. I happened to pick this one. Then you have to find me and spoil everything. Well, we had to use the sail because the engine broke. Well, why don't you try fixing the motor? Well, we tried to, but it fell in the sea. Bloop. Fell in the sea. Holy mackerel. Just my luck to be a stowaway in a boat run by two landlubbers who managed to drop the engine in the ocean. The ocean. Ah! You know, I think we've offended him. What's happened? What goes on here? Nothing. We've got a stowaway aboard. This is Antoine the chef. Giovanni Copini. Glad to meet you, sir. 
Uh, and this is Stanley. How do you do? How do you do? Why don't you be careful? Come on. Don't waste all day just talking. Get that rope. Get the sail out. Go ahead. You, the fat one, get on the other side. Pull. It takes muscle to raise a sail. The fat one on the other side. All together now. Hey. After the completion of Atoll K, Oliver Hardy was fell by a stroke that eventually led to his death. And with him died the future of Laurel and Hardy. In the ensuing years, however, Stan Laurel lived to see the release of his old films to television and a whole new appreciation by the public of Laurel and Hardy comedy. In the 1960s, films made decades earlier by the team were being repackaged as feature-length compilations. first began working as a team, Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy are still funny. Their comedy will be in demand as long as people need a good belly laugh. Looking at the present world situation, it looks like the world will be falling for Stan and Ollie for a long, long time. Well, here's another nice mess you've gotten me into. 